All right, jumping into game two. This is going to be uh, Mini versus... Uh, MGW. Sorry, guys. I, I'm like YOLO swagging this. Versus Gamo. So we're going to have Mini versus Gamo ZVP in the bottom right-hand corner. In the yellow, it is going to be Gamo the old AJ himself and in the top left in the red it is going to be mini up 1-0 in this series for his team so looking forward to seeing this Gamo is a bit of the older generation of the Koreans not necessarily the best player on this team but he's still a pretty solid player overall he went uh, decently deep in the ASL 3 and he's pretty good at just having a very good upfront style he doesn't do any sort of gimmicks he just uh is is pretty good at just macroing and giving us stuff that he needs on time so we'll have to see how he does against mini who is traditionally i think known as a bit of a cheesier player i i think well yeah if we talk about if we talk about gamo in the aj versus fat league Gamo is definitely one of the better players in the AJ team, so I think it'll still be really good. Mini is, I mean, you say that, that Gamo is infinitely better than Mini or whatever, but at the same time, you have to remember Mini just took a game off of Bisu, so anything can happen in this game. You, you don't really know what is going to happen. But like I said, this game, or uh, this map, Monte Cristo, definitely we talked about that a little bit before, that there is that open natural and a big drop area in the main it makes it really easy for mutilus play to work here by that same token drop play can also be very difficult to deal with from uh, the protoss player at the same time but we do have i believe that was actually nexus first coming out from mini so pretty confident there's already sort of an economic cheese coming out so far it's pretty nice to go for that sort of play early on, but he is going to be up against a 10 pool. He should have a cannon up by the time that any Zerglings come by, especially since he went, uh, since Gamo went for that hatch first. So at this point, Protoss is pretty far ahead, especially. Oh, wow, this is pretty interesting. So Gamo is actually going to be going for a two hatch play. He may decide to go for. Uh, zergling speed into four hatch this is sort of the the more modern zvp build that Solki popularized during uh asl3 where you just get you just get fast zergling speed and you pull everybody out of geysers until you get four hatcheries and then you put stuff back on and continue macroing up so let's see if he does that or if he actually goes for a two base play like I said, since this natural is so open, it's definitely possible to go for Mutilus and harass this natural mineral line uh, and harass into the main. And it's a lot of area to cover. It's very difficult to actually deal with that all at once. And especially because you have to put this cannon so far forward to defend on this map, it's also a lot harder to defend the back of that mineral line uh, against Scourge or Mutilus with just Corsair. So we'll have to see how he does that. Here comes the third hatch for Gamo. Looks like he might actually be going for that uh, fast zergling speed. We'll have to see when we get the next view at his base. Meanwhile, it looks like Mini is just macroing up as standard. Uh, you, you usually typically see this sort of build coming out in most PVZs. He's going to be getting that Stargate and getting the Corsair that soon. The only other option that you really have as a Protoss player in this day and age, I think, is going for like a really fast Zealot speed attack if your opponent doesn't expect it and gets lazy on the scouting. But it looks like uh, Game has actually been doing his due diligence with that Overlord, just scouting the main, seeing what's up, just poking around the map with the Zergling. So, uh, we're unlikely going to see anything super tricky coming out from Mini. There's a Stargate. Nothing surprising about that at all. So yeah, it looks like we, uh, looks like he continued to uh, leave stuff in gas, and it, we are going to be going for a fast two base 
play, uh, or at least it is gonna have that third, but it, it is uh, more of a macro hatch than scary time uh, craziness going on. So I'll have to see, there's the spire coming down. As we predicted, like I said, the natural is very open, very difficult to defend versus those meatless. So not surprised to see the spire coming out this early. And the real question is, is he going to be able to snipe off in early Corsair? If Gameo can snipe off in early Corsair, it will definitely turn the tides in his favor and make it a lot easier to uh, micro his Mutilus around that area. Uh, alternatively, he could just be going for the really fast... This is such a weird build, because he still is going for that 5 hatch, but uh, he got his gas so early, so... Pretty interesting, pretty interesting build from Gameo. I'll have to study this a little bit more, but that looks like a bit of a faster guess than we normally see. Maybe he was just late bringing that drone out to the third. Anyhow, so pretty standard stuff coming out from Zerg. He may end up just transitioning into a Hydralisk after the first couple of Scourge. We'll have to see what Gameo decides on doing, but only one Corsair coming out from Mini. He's just going to use this Corsair to scout, and oh, he's not paying attention. He already took one hit. Sorry, there's two Corsairs. Uh, he took one hit on that one that's going towards the top right, and Gameo's probably going to try to find a nice flank and pick that off while still scouting at the same time. And he sees the first couple of Zelts moving out. There goes one of the Corsairs down. This is actually a pretty ideal spot to go for the Venalist. When you know your opponent only has two of those Corsairs and you've already sniped one, you can definitely go for those Corsair or the the Mutilus play and start picking off your opponent's stuff. But this is only five zealots, so it's not going to do that much. Six zealots, uh, it's decent, but it's definitely not not going to be game breaking at all. Gamer should defend here pretty easily as long as he don't he doesn't uh, lose any drones, which he didn't. And he's still going to be flooding in a couple lings here to defend. Honestly, uh, he shouldn't have much of a problem defending, especially now that the Hydralists are out. It's not that difficult to defend, even versus this number of Zealots. And lots of gateways coming in. This implies to me that there's going to be a lot of pressure coming out from Mini. He's not going to be trying to take that early third base. He's going to be trying to put on a little bit of pressure beforehand. Or... Alternatively, he can just be building up for a big timing attack once he gets Storm and a lot of Dragoons uh, via best style. So, looking forward to seeing what comes out ahead. Gamer is actually so confident that he's held this that he's actually making drones right now. He doesn't. He's not even worried about being attacked. So a little bit uh, unorthodox, a little bit strange there. But this sunken colony is going to go down, and that's going to be really obnoxious. The sunken colony in the back is also going to go down. Lots of zealots being sacrificed here, but there's no units for Gamo. He just looks like he just forgot to build units. Uh, just went a little bit crazy on the drones there, which uh, may have been a mistake. But he's going to be going for the Mutalist now, and there aren't really any Corsairs out on the map. So this is not bad, but it's going to take these Mutalists a long time to actually clean this up. And the first Archon is out, and that's going to be a pain in the ass to deal with. He's going to have to spread out his Mutalists really nicely if he wants to deal with this. And meanwhile, really good Sim City over there in Game of Natural. It's, it's annoying to clean all this up, and Game of really took more economic uh, damage there than he really should have. If he had just been on top of his scouting and making units, he would be in a lot better position than he is right now. But anyhow, he's going to have to build non-stop units if he wants to deal with this. This is actually another dangerous position where Mini could just outright win like he did versus Bisu. And all it takes is Gamo just screwing up and not making units. And one Archon just being left out in the middle of the map. There's one Archon in this, and the Mutals are too afraid to actually get close to it. So it's a little bit difficult. You really need to have a much better micro if you want to deal with the Zealot Archon army with Mute, only uh, Mutalists and Lings, but a couple of Hydras coming out now, they're going to be able to eventually push this back. And the mining at Gamos third is has been pretty crippled. Now that I think about it, that third gas is really, really early. Usually you get that third gas in conjunction with a fourth base. So uh, Gamo just being a little bit greedy there um, and taking far more economic damage than he really should have. He's going to try to do his best to micro with these Mutalists, but they've already taken quite a few hits 
from those Archons, so they're going to be pretty weak. They're not going to be at full power. And there's there's just not a lot of Zerg right now. Uh, lots of Hydras coming in right now, which is pretty nice. They should be able to hold off any kind of future attacks, but uh, it's a little bit unfortunate that Gamo is as far behind right now as he is. He really should be a lot further ahead. We'll see if Mini continues to keep up this pressure or if he's just... Oh, never mind. He's taking a third now in uh, about the 8 o'clock position right now. So, looks like he's going to be going into that center attack. I think that's plus 2. So, plus 2 is about to finish, and that's a pretty big deal. Plus 2 is another really big upgrade for the Protoss player. They're going to be able to make Zealots basically invincible against Lings until Lings get the 2-2 uh, plus Adrenal. Uh, Gamo's continuing to make a lot of Hydralis. I wonder if he's going to be going for a Hydra bust of any kind, or if those are just safety Hydras. We'll have to see what he decides to go into from here. He should have a Hive on the way at this point. He did take a lot of economic damage, but you really need the Hive and a fourth base up pretty soon. Uh, or at the very least, you need to go heavy into Lurkers and just go uh, really heavy into a Lurker Hydra mid-game. But so far, we're seeing neither of those things right now from Gabe. It looks like he's just trying to be clever with his positioning and maybe pick up a base here and there, which would be nice, but it's uh, he needs to be careful with how he positions these Hydras and not get a little too greedy. He's going to be going for a power play over here on the top side, but it, the threat of the Corsair backstab pulls his Hydra list back. He's not going to be able to actually do anything until he kills off those Corsairs. The nice thing is, if he does kill off the Corsairs, he definitely has the ability to switch into Mutas. There are a couple of Archons and some Storms out, which is a little bit brutal, but if you can actually kill off all those Corsairs, it makes it so much easier to go into the Muta switch. Um, but we'll have to see what Gamo decides to do at this point. We see a couple more hatcheries being added on. Looks like he's probably, probably going to be going into that very Ling-heavy uh, late game, but there's no Hive on the way. This is actually pretty bad, I think, right now. Uh, Lurker is only just coming out right now. He really needs a lot more Hydras if he's going to go try for the Hydra Lurker style. But at this point, the Protoss army is big enough that I don't think Hydra Lurker is going to actually work. Hydra Lurker is one of those really good mid-game armies if you're ahead, but once your opponent has a lot of storms and has a lot of units, then it becomes significantly harder. But at the same time, I don't think there's a single Observer on the map so far, so there's definitely the possibility for a certain timing attack before the Observers get out, but they should be out pretty soon, and I, I don't think that many will actually have any problems holding an attack coming out from the Zerg player in the near future. Really nice job so far by Mini, just to fan out his units really nicely. He has the High Templar in the correct positions, so he can do a really good job of holding off any attacks and still no fourth base from Gamo. This is so weird to not go for that fourth base, but instead he's going to invest really heavily in these Mutalists and kind of go for a Mutalist cheese into the main. I'm not sure about this. I feel like this is uh, kind of a misguided uh, decision right now. But maybe he thinks he's further ahead than he is. I'm not sure. Maybe this is a Hail Mary. I'm not. This is uh, honestly so weird right now. But looks like Minnie's just going to be moving across the map. He's got enough Corsairs to deal with the Mutalists unless he uh, completely AFKs and forgets about them. And as long as he has a couple of Observers, which surprisingly he doesn't. Uh, yeah, you can tell Ginyut is uh, also pretty confused as well. <laughs> There should be some observers right now. Uh, once the observers come out, there's nothing stopping Mini from just walking across the map and killing stuff. But cute little play here with the uh, Hydralis and the Mutalist. You just kind of run around the Protoss army and pick off some stuff here and there. But it's not any significant damage. And Game is falling further and further behind in the economics. This fourth base is so late. It's actually insane how late the fourth base is, and uh, I still don't know what the status on his lair is. He does have overlayer speed. Maybe he has drops coming in. It'd be pretty interesting to go in uh, for some drops in the main, especially since he has these mutalists. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to clear the way for those drops. 
But this has overall been kind of a, a flubbed game from Gabo in my opinion. And as soon as Mini gets some observers, he can definitely push across the map and just win the game. Because this is a really scary Protoss army. And without Hive Tech, it's, it's very difficult to actually deal with it. But looks like he's going to be going for it. I There are some observers in this army. There's a, this is a very zealot heavy army, so it's a little bit gross to a, uh, just a move in here. But doing a really good job of pulling back the first couple of zealots. He's not just going to yellow swag in there and there's just there's so much protoss here that even if uh even if the first wave managed to be cleaned up like it's you can just continue to push right now and the mutal is trying to come in and snipe off the 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 high templar and it's actually gonna get quite a few but it's i don't think it's gonna be enough the real question is how what's the zealot count out if the zealots all get killed you can definitely clean this up with uh two two Adrenal gland lings, but there's nothing else and even pulling the drones out right now There's nothing left for Gamo. Just again Not being proactive with his tech not being proactive with making units and Dying when he really uh, Shouldn't have a lot more lurkers come in and they're gonna be able to uh, push this back for now but Against this many dragoons. They're eventually just gonna be able to pick off these lurkers. It's really not that big of a deal uh, the only scary thing is a whole bunch of lings coming in, but with good micro, Mini should be able to even deal with lings. There's uh, a little bit more reinforcements coming out from Zerg player, but the this army is still so... Wow, that is so many lurkers. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Looks like Gamer was banking about 2,000 gas there. That was pretty brutal. Uh, but... I don't think these archers are going to be done in time. Mini's he's just going to be able to walk in and uh, kill off all this. He at least gets the fourth base. At this point, Mini doesn't even need to do damage or uh, try to go for the kill here. Mini can actually just walk away from this and take a fourth base and be way ahead. But looks like there's going to be a small little counterattack coming through, but they didn't really do anything. And this is the point where I think Mini actually overstayed. He really honestly should have just sniped that fourth base and walked away. But uh, these links could get on top of the Dragoons. They're not going to quite, so good job right there. And uh, this, the next couple storms are coming in right now. They're going to be able to kill off a lot of units right there. The links are really scary against these Dragoons, but eventually uh, the Dragoon should be able to overpower it. He's misplaced his... Uh, looks like he's misplaced his observers a little bit, but it honestly doesn't matter. There's just too much Protoss here, and the third base has been overrun. There's the GG. Mini takes a 2-0 in the series. Is it going to be a mini all kill? 